Hello, welcome to MTG Pro Tutor. I'm Sean Pernard, your host, and today we are going to open this Cons of Tarkir booster pack and evaluate the cards inside. Now remember, when you are drafting, it is important to stay open for as long as possible. That means picking the best card regardless of color. Now I've learned some new strategies and new tips that I hope to share with you as far as cons go, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see if any of the cards here trigger those. So I always take out the marketing card, and then I take out the land, and I always look at the rare first. Oh, we have a foil, a foil uncommon, it's a Hordling Outburst. One red red, you put three one one red goblin creature tokens into the battlefield. All right, that's pretty sweet. Uh, tokens are a thing in uh, in um, Khans of Tarkir, for sure. The only problem with this one is that it's double red, so you're gonna have to, you know, really kind of be in red to make it work. So let's see what our rare is. <coughs> off to the side and we have Necropolis Fiend Wow nine mana he does have delve he's a four or five flying with X tap exile X cards from your graveyard target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn Wow okay so he has the ability to uh, start you know pinging away your opponent once you get him or uh, clearing your opponent's battlefield but the thing is, you're going to have to have a lot of creatures in the graveyard to do it. And, uh, because to get him out, you're going to have to delve. And then to use his ability, you're going to have to delve again. So, let's see what else the pack has to offer. Now, one neat thing that I learned is that five colored decks really work in Cons of Tarkir. Um, so, you could, for example, just take the best cards, regardless of color. Make sure you draft a lot of mana fixing. And, um, uh, and, and really, you know, kind of make it work. Um, you might be base three colors with uh, splashing kind of two other colors, um, but we could, you know, we don't have to worry about uh, just focusing in on, you know, one, two, or three colors. So, uh, I have not seen anybody play with Necropolis Fiend, um, and I have not drafted it yet either, so I'm interested to see how it works on the battlefield. If you have any experience with it, please leave a comment below and let me know. Treasure Cruise is amazing. This is a great card to have, um, no matter what color you're in. Um, being able to draw three cards is, is, is a big deal. And delving down to make this cost a reason, reasonable amount is a great thing. So, I like Treasure Cruise a lot. Aerostorm, not so good because of the uh, the two red. If you are in Mardu, then, then sure. But if you are doing the five color strategy, it's not that great because you really want to stick with single... Uh, mana symbols for for your five color deck. It does do four damage to target creature or player, and if you attack this turn, it does five damage instead. So, and that damage can't be prevented. So that's kind of cool. Mardu Horde Chief, a two three for three. So that's great. And then if you attack this turn, uh, you get a token, a white warrior token. That's nice. Glacial Stalker is a four five with morph. That's it. Play it for three, flip it up for five, and it's a four five. Excuse me. Alpine Grizzly, a four two. Very vicious. Uh, it costs three mana. I like it because uh, you can just, you know, you start swinging and doing some damage. If they don't block, you're hitting them for four. If they do block, then you're taking something out. You know, either uh, either one of their morph creatures or something bigger. So I, I like the, uh, the Alpine Grizzly. The Karu Dreadmaw, I'm not a big fan of this, it just doesn't seem like it has a home. Uh, a 4-4 Defender for 5, I mean I'm not a big fan. Yeah, you can sack a creature and get life equal to its toughness, but it's, I mean, come on. <laughs> I, I, I just haven't really seen this fit. Ponyback Brigade, so there is a cycle in common for each clan that unmoors for 5 mana. And uh, this one is the Mardu one and when it turns face up you put three red goblin creature tokens on, onto the battlefield so that seems pretty cool but in all honesty this is my least favorite of the uh, the common cycle um, I think the other ones are stronger ooh long shot squad I like these guys three three for four mana and they outlast for two uh, and each creature with a plus one plus one counter gets um, reach they get reach so that's really nice here we have Swiftwater Cliffs. If you are going the uh, 
if you're going the uh, five color route you're definitely going to be picking up as many of, of these lands as, as you can um, probably in the first pack you know so barring so the lands are definitely first pickable if there's not any other strong cards there especially if you're going you know um, five colors so first unco uh, first uncommon stubborn denial target creature counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays one and if you control a creature with power four or greater counter that spell instead so there you go you can if you have a creature with four or greater you can just counter a spell for one a non-creature spell for one so seems all right <clears throat> i'm not going to first pick it though all right the teamer charm target creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn and it fights target creature you don't control okay counter target spell unless it's, it's controller pays three interesting and then target and then creatures with power three or less can't block this turn hmm, that one's pretty good and finally raiders spoils for four mana creatures you control get plus one plus oh whenever a warrior you control deals combat damage to a player you may pay one life if you do draw a card so yeah if you are if you're going the whole warrior route um, then this is you know this is the card for you so um, gives you the gives you the card advantage that you need. All right, so what's the best card here uh, to give us you know, a good s um, stepping point for our deck? Swiftwater Cliffs is up there. Long Shot Squad's good. Um, I didn't see anything like super awesome. Oh man, this card is all jacked up on the edges. That is sad. Hmm, that's a bummer. So, do we take? Necropolis Fiend. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I mean, how qu how quickly can you get this guy out, really? You know? Getting him down on turn four or five would be nice. You know, on turn five, getting a four or five flyer, that's good. But, to get him down on turn five, you are going to need uh, four cards in your graveyard. So you're definitely going to want ways to fill up your graveyard, like... Uh, scout the border and other cards like that. So you're definitely gonna want to back this guy up. Um, Sultai is a very, um, very good deck uh, if you build it right, and this could be this could be a nice key component for it. So if I took Necropolis Fiend, which I think I will from this pack, then my goal is to definitely back him up and to go Sultai. Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what the other packs give us as as we get you know as we get past them, but. I'm kind of hoping for a lot of fill the graveyard cards. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And tell me what would you think. I've again, I'm uh, kind of green behind the ears when it comes to Necropolis Fiend. So let me know what you think. I'm Sean Penrod, and we'll see you in the next pack.